Hello, Internet. James Allen from Out of 8. And today I'm playing Space Racing Simulation Orbital Racer. Uh, game is single player only, so there's no online play, although I don't know if there'd be that many people online to really bother with online functionality anyway. Uh, it has a career mode where you go around and uh, have a calendar where you have to travel between the different planets in our solar system to go to races. Uh, you earn money through the races, you can get sponsorships, and then you can upgrade your ship. And there's also single races, uh, which is what I'm going to do, in addition to a tutorial. Uh, in addition to that, there's also two modes you can enjoy. There's action mode, which has a much easier flight model to follow, and also randomized power-ups, which is what I'm going to show off. There's also simulation mode, which has much more realistic and frustrating handling, uh, where, you know, since you're flying in space, uh, when you turn, you have to kind of counter thrust, uh, you know, to slow down and change direction. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to do the action mode because I think it's more interesting anyway. Uh, so we'll do a uh, single race here at amateur class. Uh, pick your different uh, ships, which doesn't really make any difference other than the HUD. Uh, there's uh, <clears throat> 24 different tracks that you can race at uh, in the career mode. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of them. We'll do the Earth one. Uh, just the difficulty level. I'll do one on beginner just to kind of show off the uh, the things there. I'm going to decrease the number of rounds to two rounds and three laps. That's kind of like uh, where I like to go. And we'll start fifth. And then you can choose your time of day uh, that you want to uh, do it. Uh, all of the races are checkpoint races. Uh, there's no uh, other game modes to go with. Also, all of the tracks are in a set order. There's no randomization, which would be seemingly easy to do uh, with a space game where you're just kind of placing checkpoints everywhere. So I think it'd be interesting to have randomized tracks that would be different every time and seemingly easy to do uh, in space. Uh, so we'll start the race here. Alright, so it gives you the little uh, rundown here. Get a little countdown and then you'll go. Uh, and basically just fly through all the checkpoints. Every three checkpoints everybody gets a power-up. Um, and because everybody gets the power-ups at the same time, it uh, means that there's a whole bunch of stuff shooting all at once. Uh, as for the HUD, the HUD is pretty informative. You have the little arrows that you can see right there, uh, which will point you to the next objective and then the following objective. Um, so really kind of the way you want to do this is kind of, you know, you're aiming for the next objective while you're flying through the current one. Uh, you will get damage over time. Also, people will shoot you with missiles. Uh, which you can then uh, deploy uh, flares to try to counteract. And I got an impact mine. So you just press the button and then it'll drop it and hopefully hit the people behind you, uh, which causes them damage. If your damage goes all the way full, uh, you respawn at the last checkpoint after a delay, uh, which really throws you behind everybody. And so I got an EMP missile, which what that does is it uh, disables your craft like that guy just did to me. So you can't actually shoot uh, or do anything. And you end up missing checkpoints if people do it at the right time. AI is pretty competitive. They're very good racers. I don't know if they're, uh, the difficulty settings are giving them slightly faster uh, chips to use or whatever. Uh, but the races have been pretty challenging, uh, especially as you get further on in the uh, career mode and as you, you know, bump up the difficulty. Graphics are also pretty nice. You know, it is in space, but all of the tracks take place, you know, near planets or space stations and stuff like that. Um, so you do get to have some visuals uh, to enjoy while you're racing. Uh, the flares have a 25% chance of success. So basically, if you deploy four, then you're good to go. I guess this is the last lap, yeah. And I am in the lead, uh, which is good after some initial uh, excitement. Uh, if you look around the little uh, checkpoints, you can also see there's a little green light. That kind of points you in the direction of the next uh, checkpoint, which is also pretty nifty. But again, since it's in space, you know, not quite sure why they, uh, you know, didn't do random layouts. And the simulation mode is a lot more difficult to, uh, you know, control because it uses Newtonian physics in space, which means you got to, you know, your thrusters are the only things that are propelling you. So, and there you go, there's race number one. And I'll bump up the difficulty and do a different track uh, for the next race. 
So usually what happens in these races is, uh, at least for me, you're either way out ahead where people don't shoot you with anything, uh, which is what happened here. I'm 14 seconds ahead of second. Or you're back in this uh, area where everybody's blowing everybody else up. <laughs> you know, uh, the game gives you everybody power-ups every three gates. So everybody's shooting missiles all at the same time. So, you know, it's two gates where nothing happens, and then after the third gate, just chaos ensues with everybody shooting everybody. Um, I would like there to be maybe a little bit more randomization there about when you get power-ups, or maybe have placement-based locations to go after them, kind of like Mario Kart, but that are out of the direct line of the, uh, you know, next checkpoint. So you would have to weigh whether it's worth to go after a power-up or go towards the next checkpoint, you know, some sort of strategic element there in terms of where you're driving. I do have an EMP missile, which I may or may not have to use, we'll see. And they just used one on me. And I still... Nope, now I'm at fourth. But now I have an EMP missile. And it does have a range, so if you get a bunch of guys clustered next to each other, uh, you can uh, surprise them that way. Uh, I'm using the game. Yep, got near that one. I'm using the gamepad for control, uh, which needs to work pretty well in the, uh, the arcade mode here. This game is much more competitive. Like I said, a lot of the cars are like right next to each other, so you know the difference between finishing, you know, second and finishing tenth is very uh, thin. Boom. The mines also have little lights attached to them where you can kind of pick them out. No, oh, come on. So I just got blown up, which means I'm going to respawn at the last uh, objective location, which means I'm going to be, like, really poor finishing. This is lap two or three. At least we have some more racing to go. Like I said, you're either way out in front or you're stuck in the back here with all the commoners. Uh, just getting shot at constantly. It's mine. I think I missed it. I'm going to stunk right next to the finish. Well, still one. I had a mine, too. I could have dropped that. Oh, well. Yay! I only won by five seconds that time, so I am the winner. Alright, so we'll do one more race. So, single race. Uh, let's do... Well, we'll do amateur. I like amateur. Uh, let's do... I wish there was one in Uranus, but we'll do this one. That looks fairly challenging. And we'll go purple. And we'll bump it up to easy. Uh, and then decrease the rounds and the laps. Start fourth. All right. Now the starting thing is randomized at least, so you don't know when to time it necessarily. Whoa. There are collisions, as you can see. So, you can actually turn those off if they bother you. I think it adds to the experience, uh, having the collisions on.
Oh, I do have a boost. Uh, what boost does is just... Oh, and I totally missed that gate. You only have a certain number of misses you can have before uh, you get in trouble. Uh, boost just gives you acceleration when you hold down the button. So, you know, useful for an especially straight piece of track. Yeah, my damn, I almost am blowing up here. Oop, down here. I should catch a number of people. Like I said, once everybody goes through the same gate, everybody ends up getting the power up, so. You know, ends up becoming crazy explosions all the time. Ah, EMP. Boost. <laughs> Made me <laughs> miss like all the gates. Yeah, that was pretty terrible. Finished next to last. Maintenance break for no, <laughs> no apparent reason. One more race, a couple more minutes. That should be good. I hope that disabled like everybody. At least enough to increase my position a bit. Still only have like half damage. Boost. It's like dangerous. There's a mine right there. I think I hit it. The missiles are just EMPs and impact ones too. They're the same thing as the mines. Ugh, EMP. Cost me like three positions. Give me some. <laughs> that gave me nothing. Oh well. Oh, I finished. Ah, fourth isn't terrible. Let's see what I finished. I finished in ninth. Well, whatever. There you go. That's uh, Orbital Racer. Uh, it's okay. Uh, you know, like I said, it's single player only, which doesn't really bother me because I don't think there'll really be that many people online playing it anyway. Uh, I like to see uh, randomized layouts. You know, being in space, you would think that'd be something easily done or relatively easily done. Uh, 
you know, give the game a little bit more replay value. It has a pretty basic career mode where you just, uh, you know, win money at events that you use to upgrade your um, ship. You can earn sponsorships by finishing well also. Uh, I do like that there are two different handling modes, although I vastly prefer the action mode. I like having the weapons uh, and the easier handling. Uh, for people who want to have a realistic, uh, more realistic simulation, that option's there. So I always like having more options. Uh, the power-ups, I wish it was a little bit more randomized or strategic, where maybe there were specific power-up locations that you can pick up scattered around the map outside of the main racing line. Uh, so you'd have to kind of go a little bit out of, out of your way to get some of the power-ups. Uh, instead of everybody getting them every three gates and then everybody shooting at the same time. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of the strategy out uh, of that. AI is good. You know, it uh, races the tracks really well. Um, and overall, the game plays, you know, a little bit differently than your usual arcade racer because of the setting. Um, and it does have some uh, interesting features with, uh, you know, the two different uh, racing modes. The interface is good. Uh, the physics are very, uh, you know, well done, I would say, very plausible. Um, and, again, the AI is a, a good uh, opponent to race against. Uh, so if you're looking for something different as an uh, arcade racer, uh, then this is something I, you might want to check out. That's all I have for today. Till next time, bye now.